How's it going guys? Russell back with Adikio 2 and I'm actually going to walk you through another one of my functional 3D print creations. Um, this one here, uh, if you can't tell, is actually a wireless charger stand um, for a cell phone. Uh, now the cell phone that I designed it for was the Galaxy S7, uh, the Samsung Galaxy S7. Uh, it also works with uh, numerous other Samsung Galaxy phones and it should work with most other uh, wireless chargers. Uh, I did design it for a square Samsung wireless charger and I'll show you that uh, in just a couple of, uh, of pictures and stuff in a minute. Uh, but this is what it looks like. Now I did all the modeling uh, in SolidWorks uh, and I do have to perform a couple of modifications. So as, uh, as, as I walk you through the process of how I built it, um, I'll be uh, modifying a couple of things uh, and then uh, I'll be uploading the file for you guys to use and enjoy later. Now there are a couple of things that I wanted to differentiate this wireless stand from other wireless stands. As you can see here, these ones on Amazon, they really only support wireless charging in one direction for the phone and that is the portrait direction. I kind of was thinking, well what if I'm uh, watching a movie on YouTube or stream monitoring or something like that and I wanted to keep the phone horizontal and still keep it charging and that that was a big uh, a big factor I wanted it to be able to charge the phone in two different orientations so that is actually why you can see these features or uh, 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 here we go uh, these features here um, are actually so you can hold the phone sideways and it'll still charge and, and I'll show you what, what that'll look like when it's all assembled after I walk through uh, the design of this. So we're just going to go over to this pane. Uh, now that this is all built and finished and stuff, it's really easy to go back and uh, sort of do a shorter version of how this was designed in SolidWorks. So I'm just going to drag this bar all the way back and I started with the side profile. Now this side profile was basically just limited by the length. So if we were to look at the length of this bottom edge here, you can see that this is 100 millimeters long and the total height is something uh, less than 120 millimeters because that is the build volume of my Monoprice Maker Select Mini V1. It's 120 by 120 by 120 roughly plus or minus five millimeters depending on how far you want to push it uh, and I had to make sure that the entire stand were to fit in one single print bed so if I go back to here you see that this length is 111 millimeters and then from top to bottom it's 105 millimeters tall so that was sort of where that came in and the the, the angle was just sort of guessed actually. I actually use a selfie camera. I put the phone on the desk and then sort of propped it up at a particular angle um, until I sort of saw my face in the selfie camera which means that the screen is then perpendicular to your line of sight which gives you the best viewing angles. So that, that's how I came up with this angle and if I were to tell you what that angle is it would be 60 degrees thereabouts. I also was uh, taking into consideration that the further back I make this angle, if I were to take it and then if I were to sort of twist it more like this when keeping this bottom edge straight, that would decrease the print quality. So I had to sort of balance the two up. But 60 degrees actually works functionally f very well. After the side profile, I had sort of extended it. Uh, this is now the middle section. This is fairly simplistic. Uh, this bottom section is going to be where the phone is and this top section is going to be where the charger sits. Now I just mirrored uh, this other portion over onto this edge so now you have a sort of a complete stand that's really starting to take shape this radius back here again was only designed with consideration for the print quality if the radius was too small it wouldn't come out very nice if it was too large then you just print too much uh, too much material you use too much but I also took into account the curvature of the cable so if you can kind of picture you'll see it in a bit but uh, there was a cutout down here and the cable has to curve around and this is sort of the, the radius of, of the cable that I felt would be significant enough that you could turn the cable and then run it underneath um, but then also you wouldn't be doing any harm to the cable the next step was just a, a couple of fillets down here just to make it look nicer to to clean the print up a little bit and then uh, a few uh, cut extrusions now you can sort of see where the cable is uh, gonna end up being placed and this is actually one of the extrusions um, that I have to fix so I have to make this approximately two millimeters longer so that's gonna be 22 millimeters the next cut is that one there so again this is just more relief for uh, for the strain relief and then this is just uh, beginning or uh, continuing that strain relief so the cable can wrap around. This next cut is going to go all the way to the back so then the cable can now um, snake out the back of the stand without ever actually being seen which is another thing that I want to do. I wanted to keep the, the stand looking very very clean and then uh, a couple of fillets. Uh, one uh, uh, on the bottom here um, to make bridging of this gap easier when printing uh, because if you can imagine if there weren't any fillets there bridging that that flat piece there would actually be uh, fairly difficult. You'd need some support 
support material. But instead of doing that, I just uh, created the fillet so then I can fill that in gradually. This next fillet, this one over here for the strainer leaf of the cable. Our next extrusion were uh, this uh, support for the portrait mode, or sorry, landscape mode. And then uh, there's another one that goes on the other side and these shapes are fairly simplistic. And then they were cut back uh, to allow uh, a little bit less material to be used. Um, now what you might notice, or what I have noticed rather, is that if there was a phone sitting in here, they are actually a little bit low. Uh, so I'm going to go back to this extrusion here, uh, and then we're going to uh, edit these sketches. Um, because I want to raise them up a little bit, just so it's a little bit more in line um, with uh, uh, with the final result. No, I don't want to do that. Um, <laughs> so uh, again, uh, so I just noticed that on uh, my current stand, let's call it the prototype, this section here was just a, a few millimeters too low uh, when charging my Galaxy S7. Uh, it charged better with the top half of the phone on the right hand side when in landscape mode versus when the top hand side was on the left hand side in landscape mode so uh, only because it, it wasn't sitting centered on the charger so bringing this up a little bit will center the phone on the charger a little bit better um, so if we can just sort of fast forward and we can go through uh, another one of those cuts there um, we're going to have to uh, edit this as well uh, because uh, these cuts are a little bit too low Now, uh, it's slightly curved there, only to hold the phone a little bit better. I figured that if it was a flat uh, surface and your phone is extra slippery, or if you have a case on it, it might not sit uh, totally centered. So I figured that adding a little bit of curve will just help keep the phone in place a little bit more. So the last step is just a few fillets just to clean it up a little bit to get rid of that sharp edge. This increases print quality. Uh, and then uh, we add some more fillets over here. Again, this is just to account for some uh, some printing error. 3D printers generally don't like to print hard corners. Try and fillet them out whenever you can. It, it'll make your job a lot easier afterwards. It'll also make a nicer looking product. And then we got some fillets up the top again just to get rid of some corners and then one last uh, set down here and there you have it this is now a wireless charging stand so i'm going to save this and now i'm going to open the assembly so i can show you the way it's supposed to work so here it is. Now this black piece is just a placeholder for the wireless charger. I did measure it out, again with my set of digital calipers. It says Samsung right in the middle, so it's one of Samsung's genuine chargers. And I didn't see any stands for this particular charger, which is another reason why I uh, had set out uh, to, to build one. So there you go. And then the, the charging port is down here, and then the cable sits in here. And then again, if you guys remember, we cut out an, an extra two, mil two millimeters for some cable relief. And then these are a touch higher, and that should uh, that, that should work just fine. So now, if we go into portrait mode, there's the phone, and it sits nice. So you can see it's it's fairly centered on the phone. This is a model that I pulled off of GrabCAD. I'll have all the links to all the models again uh, in the description below. Um, but this is a model of a Galaxy S7. Um, it does fit an S8 as well. That's what you can see. It's just a touch wider than the S7. And I do have an S8 now with a case and it fits it just fine. So if you have an S8, if you have an S7, if you have any other phone, typically that is uh, smaller than 75 millimeters wide, you should be uh, just fine as long as it's capable of wireless charging. And for the big thing, here is the landscape mode. So oops, there. Before actually you saw, before we moved it, you see how it sits quite low. I actually didn't really take that into account, but now if we were just to set it on, you can see it, it sits a little bit more centered in the charger and that will sort of increase the reliability. So there you have it guys, that's how I came up with my wireless phone charging stand. Um, I actually really liked coming up with the, this idea. Uh, I hadn't found, again, uh, another solution to a problem that I wanted to solve. Um, and here we are. So I hope uh, at least one of you guys finds that a little bit uh, entertaining, if not useful. Uh, again, all the model files will be uh, down in the description below, ready for use. If you guys like this video, you might want to check out my last one, which is something similar. I designed a shock mount for my Yeti microphone. 
and you can find all the details in that. So if you liked what you see, give me a thumbs up, drop a comment in the comment section below if you have any ideas for future videos, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, stay tuned for some more similar content, and I will see you guys in the next video.